Morning Jeep fans, here working in my shop a little bit uh, this afternoon. I figured since everyone's doing these cool project videos, I would do one as well. So this is the big unveiling of what Dave is actually doing with his Jeep. So as a little bit of background, I just got back from the Colorado Fall Colors Tour a couple weeks ago. Uh, it was an awesome trip. I would highly recommend it to anyone that can swing it. Um, met a lot of really awesome people, um, got to see some great scenery and doing it in a Jeep was just an added bonus. Um, the one complaint, if any, I would have was during the trip, I did have a little bit of engine trouble in my Jeep. Um, we had to replace a, a bad exhaust valve in the beginning of the week. And the rest of the week, the Jeep did very well. I was very pleased with uh, the lockers and the T90C and the Terra Low gear set. The one thing that I felt was a little underwhelming was the amount of power I had. Um, so it was a stock L134. Um, if you guys follow along uh, to anything I do, you know that uh, I took a, an MB, a chain drive MB engine, uh, put some rings and bearings in it earlier in the summer, uh, slapped it back together. The intention was to really only have it last uh, for the week because I planned on pulling it back out, um, rebuilding another flathead and putting it in there. Uh, so I didn't really have any hopes of the engine lasting. Um, I think by the end of the week, Started losing a little bit of oil pressure and uh, maybe had a little bit of a hint of a rod knock. Uh, so, I'm doing a lot of thinking over the past couple weeks and I'm going to talk to you today about what I plan to swap in my Jeep. Um, it's a little unconventional, uh, so let's see it. So you guys may be thinking, wow, Dave, really going out on a limb, swapping an F head into your CJ3A. But wait, there's more. It's also going to be fuel injected. This is a throttle body setup off a, I think a mid to late 90s Iron Duke. Um, as you can see, here is the gasket for the throttle body. Um, I think it's going to work pretty well. You know, we're going to have to make a, some sort of adapter plate um, to adapt it to the bottom. Uh, this circle right here is for an idle air control valve um, to help the engine idle a little bit better. Um, as you can see, the throttle body is new, uh, comes, with a, ooh, comes with a throttle position sensor and an idle air control valve on the injectors up here. Um, a, I think this is the return line and this is the pressure line, um, so I'll have to get those plumbed up. I am going to be managing it with either a mega squirt or a micro squirt. You're probably thinking, well, that's pretty exciting, you know, something a little unconventional, but there are people that have fuel injected uh, F-134s. So I'm gonna take it a step further and add this. So you're probably wondering what the heck this is. Well, uh, a friend of a friend is a president of the Kaiser Car Club. Um, he lives over in Michigan. I had the chance to meet him at Iola this summer. Really cool guy, really into Kaiser cars. Uh, so this, is actually a factory um, branded McCullough. It is a supercharger. Um, you could have got this stock on a uh, Kaiser Darren, or I think there was one other car that came with it. Um, I think over there is the bracketry. Um, so this would have been a factory option on uh, an L226 engine. Um, so with that, that adapter I pointed right out pointed out this would have bolted right on a Super Hurricane. Um, that's the, the six cylinder flathead that came in some Kaiser vehicles. Um, it's pretty cool. It has a variable speed pulley in the front. Uh, a pretty cool planetary setup on the inside. Um, I'm not really focused on making crazy amounts of boost. I really only wanna make maybe four to six pounds um, just to help the L134 compensate a little bit at, at altitude. Um, so I think that, with the fuel injection, um, is going to make it pretty reliable. So you may be wondering at this point, Dave, why didn't you just swap in a Kubota diesel, or V6, or V8, or any combination in between? So my big goal with this project is my Jeep is fairly original, and it, it, despite how it looks, it's actually in fairly good shape. Um, the body is really solid, the frame is really solid. Uh, so I wanted to keep that, 
And I also wanted, uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of time making custom parts. Um, you know, fabbing up a new exhaust, um, changing the drive shafts, uh, cutting the floor, anything like that. So the benefit of the F-Head is it'll bolt right into the Jeep. Um, no modification necessary, should fit. Um, a common issue with putting an F-Head in a low hood uh, 2A or 3A is the carb usually hits the bottom of the hood. So you see people put all these ridiculous hood scoops on, uh, things like that. I did not want that, so there are a few options out there to put a shorter carburetor on, um, which could alleviate the problem. But as I said, one of the issues I had at the Fall Color Store was low on power. Um, so I think one of, the, one of the ways to overcome that is fuel injection. Um, so there's two benefits, uh, more consistent uh, fuel, I don't have to adjust the carburetor or anything like that, and spark is another thing. Um, so a factory distributor in one of these Jeeps, you're limited, uh, I think the mechanic, mechanically you're limited to about 17 degrees of advance. Um, so a combination of high altitude and ethanol gas, um, you, you can be kind of limited, it kind of hurts your power a little bit. Uh, so I plan to manage my fuel injection system with a kind of an open source ECU called Mega Squirt. Um, they make a more basic option called a Micro Squirt. It allows me to control the entire spark map of the engine through the RPM range, as well as adjust um, fuel parameters for elevation and things like that, which is kind of nice. So that really should help with more consistent power out of the engine, um, should help with easy starting. Um, and since I ended up dragging my Jeep all over the country, um, it should run pretty reliably no matter where I have it. Um, another thing I was worried about or concerned about is the, the pretty drastic changes in elevation um, where I drive my Jeep. I live here in Wisconsin. Um, I have a bunch of family out in Pennsylvania. Um, I was ended up out in Colorado. You know, Lord only knows where else I'm going to end up in the world with this thing. Uh, so I wanted some way to be able to compensate for a lot of changes in altitude. Uh, supercharger, you know, I'm not 100% not set on the supercharger. I may end up going with a turbocharger. Got to do a little more research to figure out maybe which is best. Um, so that kind of tied into my decision to use Mega Squirt or Micro Squirt as well. Um, so a uh, some EFI systems out there, like the ones from Hamilton, they use uh, what's called a speed density um, system to control the fuel map. Uh, so basically there's a little pressure sensor down in the manifold um, which calculates the volume of air based on the pressure of the manifold and while that's good it um, it, it doesn't allow for drastic swings it kind of operates in this narrow band um, and I, I didn't necessarily want that but micro squirt has the option to hook up a mass airflow sensor which is used on another style of fuel injection um, that actually measures the volume of air getting stuffed into the engine. Um, so that's a lot better for um, fuel, or excuse me, not fuel injected, um, forced induction systems. Uh, you know, you're measuring the volume of air and it bases the fuel map off of that instead of uh, pressure. So it's a lot more accurate. It's a lot more forgiving, um, especially in a, in a boosted setup. And, um, it, it, it will self-tune to a degree, um, so I have to get it close, but it should be able to adjust and compensate for that. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited. That's, uh, that's the big project I got going on this winter. I don't necessarily have a timeline for how soon I want to complete it. Um, hopefully by the spring so I can get jeeping again. I mean, winter in Wisconsin here is pretty cold, so I'll be spending a lot of time inside. I'm um, pretty excited for the project. I still have a little more research to do. Um, trying to think of what, what I'm trying to research. Uh, one of the big things is a wide band versus narrow band oxygen sensor that I'm gonna have to put in the exhaust. So that will help adjust the fuel map. So I'm getting pretty close to the 14.7, um, which is the optimal air to fuel ratio. Uh, so that'll tell the computer whether I'm running lean or rich uh, and be able to adjust. Um, narrow band, you know, again, kind of like uh, a speed density set setup, it has a very narrow window, which it can operate and compensate for. Uh, but if I use a system like a wide band sensor, 
Uh, it's a little more complicated to program and wire, but it's a lot more forgiving and can read a lot bigger tolerance. Um, I think there was something else too that I was researching. It's escaping my brain right now, but uh, hopefully I uh, will do a write-up on the CJ2A page, so keep your eyes peeled. Um, should be pretty interesting to follow. I want to try and post as much technical information as possible um, to help other, others understand why I'm choosing certain things uh, versus others and kind of walk through uh, the process uh, of my engineering mind and get people educated on, you know, I didn't know anything about fuel injection three weeks ago. Um, I've learned a lot. I've spent a lot of late nights reading. Um, it's very interesting to me. Uh, it's kind of like a big mathematical puzzle with uh, Jeeps and Jeep engines. So to me, it's kind of cool. It's a little bit of a cool research project. Um, yeah, it might have been simpler to uh, swap a V6 or do a Kubota swap or something like that. But what's the fun in that? Because I'm not really learning anything. Uh, so again, you know, this is kind of a cool little research project. Hopefully it pans out to be fun. So stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to try and post a lot of pictures and videos and give updates periodically. Uh, so if you're interested in that sort of thing, stay tuned.